and welcome back to the channel of nonsense. This week we're driving one of the most important cars in Porsche's history. And I'm afraid it's not a Carrera GT nor a 917, but it is the Macan. But don't switch off because this is very important because this is sold by the bucket load, which means that Porsche has been able to make all the exciting stuff they do. However, this does have 440 horsepower, so it might be quite exciting. Stick around, find out. I've been living with this for a week. I've stuck my kids in it. I've done trips everywhere in it, frankly. So I'm gonna give you a full review. Let's get cracking. Ah, my arm! <laughs> The Macan rode into our lives on the coattails of its bigger brother, the Cayenne, the car that proved SUVs could actually be fun, at least if Porsche had anything to do with them. The Macan's quite a bit cheaper than its bigger brother though, £47,000 for a basic one. If you want this, the range topping turbo, that's £69,000. Way! This car right here has got £13,000 worth of options on it, so it's £83,000, something like that. Part of that is £600 to paint all the insides of the headlights black. I'm not sure. It's a bit pimping for me in this white, but hey, I'm not going to be having the money to buy one of these anytime soon. Come on, YouTube, help me out. Right, let's talk about engines in the Macan while I've got this lovely shadow across my face. The entry-level Macan, the Macan as it's called, gets a two-litre four-cylinder engine with 245 horsepower. It's good for 0 to 62 in 6.7 seconds. Then there's the Macan S, which gets a three-litre V6, about 354 horsepower. Then there's the GTS and this, the turbo, which both get a 2.9-litre twin-turbo V6 in the turbo here, it's got 440 horsepower, 550 newton meters of torque, not 62 in 4.3 seconds with launch control. It's basically the same engine that's in the Audi RS4, but with 50 newton meters of torque less. Thrilling. Now, you might be wondering where that 13 grand options bill comes from. Most of it, you can see on the side of the car. It's on air suspension, which is a 1,000 pound option. This car weighs 1.95 tons, so it's not exactly a lightweight for its size. You've got three and a half grand carbon ceramic brakes. You've got one grand torque vectoring on the back axle. You've got, what else you got? You've got 1,500 quid of 21 inch wheels. Yeah, and I think 600 quid of carbon fiber down the side. You can go mental with Porsche options. Uh, this has got most of them, to be honest. Although apparently you can get these to six figures, which is crazy, buy a KN. Here at the back is where you saw most of the changes in the 2018 facelift. You've got this big light strip that goes all the way across the back, kind of in line with the KN and the Panamera. There are some options on here, getting the name of the car in black, 168 pounds. Turbo gets matte silver quad exhausts as standard. Now, it took me ages to find the boot release button on this because it's here and I'm an idiot. It's a bit slower than I thought. You think Porsche one should fly up. Anyway, let's not worry about the speed of the boot. It's 488 litres in there. It's pretty roomy. You've got adjustment for the air suspension so you can lower the back of the car for dogs and old people that you want to bury. And you've got quite a bit of space under the boot floor, which is... No, it looks like it should be adjustable, but I don't think it is. I think it's just removable. I'm not sure why you'd want to remove a big bit of felty wood, but there we go, you can if you want to. And as with all good cars, you can get on the lash with some lashing points. Brilliant. Now, there's a good chance you'll be looking at McCann because you've got kids or a family or you just want a roomy car. And the good news is the back seats are reasonably roomy with a few caveats. The center tunnel is quite big, so your middle seat passengers don't get loads of foot space. And this, is a child seat for a kid up to one year, it's my daughter. And that hits the back of my seat in my driving position. And I actually sit quite close to the wheel despite being six foot three. So there's not a huge amount of room for kids seats. Uh, my toddler seat fits a bit better, but still it's not as big as you might expect back here for child seats. Otherwise everything's good. You've got two USB-Cs, fans, temperature adjustment, all that kind of stuff. And the view out is pretty good. Let's go up front. Up front, the interior of the Macan is actually a bit of a mixed bag. It certainly feels lovely with leather everywhere. I think there's a 1500 quid extended leather package on this car. 
It's got wireless Apple CarPlay, the entertainment is good, it's bright, it's clear, it's a touch screen. <laughs> But boy are the physical buttons. Normally I complain that we don't get enough physical buttons. The Macan goes way too far the other way and basically gets a button shotgun and fires them at the center console. And that's really a sign of how old this car is. This is a really old Porsche design that's gone in the Panamera and KN now. You've got buttons for bloody everything down here. It's really confusing at first. And they're all kind of got these silver little bits, which are really bright in the sun. And they contain little LEDs, so you can see if your heated seat's on level one, two, or three. But those LEDs are really hard to see in bright sunlight. Same for the suspension and everything else. Dash is really straightforward, clear. There's a little digital screen on the right. You can have a map in there, trip computer, that kind of stuff. The rest is analog. That's all fine. One really annoying thing is the key. It's keyless to get in and out of the car, fine, but you have to use the key to start it. You've got to slot it into the old hole and give it a twist. That's what she said, etc., etc. But it's really annoying because you get so used to leaving the key in your pocket. You then sit in here, it's like, ah, oh, bugger, I've got to hunt around my pockets and find the key. You do get used to it, but it's quite old fashioned. I imagine that will go in the next facelift. Um, there's some expensive options in here, 400 pounds for a heated steering wheel, and I think it's 350 quid to have the Porsche crest on the headrests. The turbo does get an Alcantara headlining as standard, which is super cool, super sporty. And you've got these metal trims here, which feel, I mean, they're lovely, they are metal, but they feel horrible. It's like scraping your nails down a blackboard. You just don't want to touch them. So avoid them if you can. Otherwise, it's all right. The only other niggle I have is there's no real place to stick your phone when you're driving. There's no cubby hole big enough here. And I just use the cup holders, which is no good if you've got a cup, is it? So yeah, a bit of a whinge here from the interior up front, but it all looks nice and feels nice. The steering wheel is from a 991.2911, I think. So you can say you've got a Porsche 911 steering wheel. Nice metal paddles. Yeah, it's, it, it's mostly good. It's just as a few little dated quibbles. Enough quibbling, let's go and drive it because I think that's going to be quite good. Right, let's go for a drive in the Porsche Macan Turbo. Twist the key thing, start it up. Automatic only Porsche Doppelkupplung, uh, PDK. And then away we go. Choose driving modes using this little twiddly thing like in an old 911 on the wheel. Well, like the current 911 as well, actually. So you've got individual sport, sport plus and O which I think is ordinary. It's just the normal mode. The good thing is whatever mode you're in, you can adjust the suspension between three settings, comfort, sport and sport plus using one of the mini buttons down here. You can also adjust the lift of the car. There's an off-road button because it's all four wheel drive. You can obviously go off-roading, do stuff like that. There's the stability control button, press it once and it puts it in a dynamic mode, which we'll come on to later. And whatever mode you're in, you can make the exhaust go loud and noisy as well. So I have to say, the V6 in this car is reasonably quiet and it's just, you know, not a shouty engine. There's a car coming, so I'm going off-road. And yeah, it makes a cultured, sophisticated noise. It almost sounds a little bit 911-y, but it's quite quiet, which is probably what you want in a family SUV. If you put it in Sport Plus mode and hit the loud exhaust button, you do get some cracks on the odd upshift. But generally speaking, it's a refined cruiser and it's certainly comfortable as well. You'd have no problems whatsoever doing long motorway journeys, even on crappy roads with kids in this. That air suspension is definitely an option that you want to go for though, because it just gives you choices of comfort and all that kind of stuff. And it's only a grand, which in the scheme of things is nothing. Look at all the cows, so many cows. You can pay extra, obviously, to have this covered in cameras, a whole 360 camera package, which is worth going for because it's not loads of money and it's worth having. I'm not sure you can get head-up display in Macan, though. This is a pretty kitted out press car and it doesn't have one. I haven't actually checked the option availability, but it does seem a bit remiss in what is a luxury SUV. So yeah, no head-up display, just using the very clear dials down here, but that makes it feel a little bit dated. Right, I'm gonna stop waffling and get to my fast twisty roads and then we can talk about McCann's party piece. It's quite a good one. <laughs> Before I get to my twisty road stuff, I should talk about some more boring things such as visibility. Really good actually, you can see out the back really easily, the mirrors are good, over your shoulder. It's a good car to drive around town, you can just see everything, it's very easy. 
I haven't talked about the geeky thing of the control weights. Now, usually when you get in a Porsche, the accelerator is quite heavy, but kind of progressive, and the brake pedals take a bit of a push. And the steering has a nice weighty feel to it that feels like it's directly linked to the wheels. Now, that's all true in the McCann, despite this being a family SUV, it still feels like a Porsche, which means it feels completely different from behind the wheel to any other SUV. It's electric steering, but it just feels natural. It feels really good. The gearbox is always in the right gear. It does go down quite a few gears when you put it in the sporty modes, but it always kicks down when you want it to. So yeah, it's, um, it's good. It feels like a Porsche so far. Let's talk about fuel economy before I forget, because in the turbo, it ain't great, sadly. I've been poodling. I've done about 190 miles in this over the past week, and I've been averaging 20 22 mpg the highest i saw was 25 mpg cruising on a long motorway track but yeah you're paying for performance it's a heavy car and it's going to sip fuel at a ridiculous rate and it does so maybe think about getting the s or possibly the gts which is the same engine as this but in a 380 horsepower state of tune might be a bit less thirsty but yeah just bear that in mind this isn't going to be like a diesel audi q5 it's going to drink fuel Right, we're coming up to the twisty roads finally. I can show you what the Macan is really all about. Now, when I first started driving this car, I thought it felt a bit stodgy and like you could feel all of that almost two ton weight. But then I realized that, well, Frank I wasn't driving it hard enough through corners. It's a rare thing for an SUV that the harder you drive it, the better it gets. But it's the case with the Macan. So we are about to get to the twisty road of joy. And we'll talk about actually some of the negatives as well as the positives. Let's slow down. We're about to go from 30 to 60. I'm in Sport Plus. Actually, I'm going to give the old um, stability control, put that into dynamic mode. So it's still on, but it's a, gives it more room to move about. Right, anyway, second gear, 30 to 60. There we go, that's 60. So it is quick, but it doesn't actually feel that exciting this engine it's just a very linear shove and it almost feels naturally aspirated there's no big turbocharged slug of torque although obviously there is because it's turbocharged and it's torquey but it doesn't feel it and it doesn't particularly feel exciting what it does do though is corner really impressively it feels really flat in the bends and with stability slackened off out of wet junctions wet roundabouts wet corners second gear give it a bootful and it will slide around a bit in a way that I think only the Julia, not the Julia, the Stelvio Quadrifoglio does. It's really entertaining to drive quickly and you feel the torque vectoring as well, shuffling the power around at the rear axle. So that is an option that is well worth ticking. Now, I'm stuck behind a pickup truck, so I'm gonna turn around to this road again and show you why I like it so much. Okay, it feels fast there. <laughs> what I would say is this is a very fast car to go from point A to point B on roads you don't really know because obviously it's four wheel drive gives you complete confidence even in the wet <laughs> shouldn't be able to do this in an SUV but it's a lot of fun Yeah, okay, it does feel a little bit heavy on the brakes. The carbon ceramics are really powerful, but they do ever so slightly unsettle the car when you hit them hard on a non-flat piece of tarmac. Gear shifts are super fast. Everything is just direct and it's an easy car to drive fast. It's got that classic Porsche feeling of togetherness of all the components working to help you drive efficiently on sportly or something. Should point out you've got a little button on here called sport response so you press that and it sharpens everything up for 20 seconds oh, so you can do launch control yeah okay at times this car feels savagely fast usually from a standstill but once you're on the move it doesn't feel hugely fast i realize i pretty contradicted myself i just wanted to clarify that professional Anyway, very good car to drive, surprisingly fun, 
haven't shown you that but does little skids as well anyway enough waffling back to you tim for an outro so in conclusion, what do I think of the Porsche Macan? Well, it's a pretty fun car to drive. Okay, it's a very fun car to drive, but I think the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quattrofolio is even funner. This turbo isn't actually quite as brutally fast as you might expect. So I'd just go for an S or a GTS and save some money because it's an expensive car and that's another downside. Porsche options are just ridiculous. You basically don't get a steering wheel if you order a basic one. But yeah, otherwise it's a pretty good family SUV. The interior is a bit cluttered, bit busy, not got all the refinements that you might want, like a place to put your phone when you're driving. But otherwise, it's pretty decent. I think the next facelift will really keep this going for another few years. And if you want a smart German luxury fun SUV, then you can't go wrong with a Macan. And there's a reason they're so bloody popular. And I'm mostly impressed I've got through this whole review without calling it a Taycan, because they sound vaguely similar. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the old you-know-what, Pyramids of Giza, and I will see you next time. Possibly without my nipples being on show.